Gwen Gwynville is the CEO of Yes Cymru, which is one of the main organisations campaigning for Welsh independence. And over the next bit of time, we are going to be talking about Welsh independence, levels of support for it, and Yes Cymru's strategy for getting there. But before we delve into any of that, Gwen, I just wanted to give you a massive welcome. Thank you so much for joining. How are you doing today? Oh, thanks, Chris. I'm very well, thanks. As you, as you can see, I'm outside in the fresh spring air, which is uh, uh, lovely. Al fresco. Very, very good. We're talking about Welsh independence and... I think, um, I don't think it'd be unfair to say, if you look at the opinion polls, if you look at um, where public attitudes are, that at the moment, uh, support for Welsh independence is lower than it is for Scottish independence. Why do you think that is? So, yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, I, I think what's more interesting is possibly the speed at which Welsh independence support has, has grown. So, so just nine years ago, um, in the weeks running up to the Scottish Indy referendum in 2014, there, there was a poll in Wales putting support at Welsh independence at 5%. And if you think about it, just nine years later, we are consistently at 25%, sometimes 30%. So, you, you know, that's a five-fold increase in nine years. And, and I know some of my colleagues in the Scottish independence movement are quite envious of the pace of change here and, and the different way in which independence has been approached in, in Wales. Um, whereas in Scotland for a very long time, it, it has been very tied to the fate and fortune of the SNP rather than a more broadly based one. Um, so I, I, I think that that's one interesting fact. And the, the other thing is that, you, you know, in, in Wales, there has been a sense, um, even amongst quite strongly Welsh people, of being part of a broader project particularly in the 20th century. Um, and that project being the union, you know, being um, the ideological division and, and unity against, uh, you, you know, different ideologies, the Cold War, Second World Wars, and all of that has changed. You know, all of that has changed. The, the 21st century is a different world. We've come to the end of, of an age of history. And, and that's filtering through, not only in Scotland, but certainly in Wales. And you can definitely see it in the demographic, you know, support amongst the young in Wales is sometimes eight, nine, ten times as high as amongst the over 65s, for example. And the challenge for us is talking to those over 65s and helping them understand how much the world has changed and, and the time for independence has come. So you touched on it a little bit there, but could you talk us through what Yes Cymru's current priorities are in campaigning for Welsh independence? So, I mean, I mean we're still a very young organisation and, and our priority at the moment is building that organisation. I mean, we're a grassroots campaign. Um, we're led by our members based on a group structure that we've only recently formalised. I mean, the, the organisation was set up in 2016, grew incredibly quickly. Um, I'm, I'm the first employed chief exec and I've only been in post for seven months um, and I have, I have one employee. So, you, you know, we're building up that group structure at the moment. And that's what we need to create so that every town, every village in Wales has a Yes Cymru representation in it. So that when we have the conversations about independence, you can have that conversation with someone who is very local to you in, in your own language. Um, and when I say language, I don't mean Welsh or English or any other language. What I mean is, you know, the language of that community. It's someone that you're familiar with who understands why importance would be good, independence would be good for you as an individual, why it's good at that super local level as well as at the national level. And so you've, you've talked about the kind of structure of Yes Cymru and how you're going to operate in that sense in terms of the campaign, but what does your vision look like for an independent Wales? Well, that, that, that's a really interesting question, isn't it? And I, um, I, I think very core to that vision is that it will not be the way Wales looks now. And it will not be um, a sort of rehash of the existing Westminster model. I mean, it has to be different. You know, we must have, we must make things better for the people of Wales. We have over 90,000 children in absolute poverty in Wales. It's an horrendous statistic for what is 
you know, nominally one of the wealthiest places in the world. Um, and, you know, to make things better, you have to have deep and radical change. So I think, I think that radical change has to be built into it, but it has to be led by the people of Wales. So when you come to that transition phase um, towards independence, you need to talk to the people of Wales and, and it must be led by them. I mean, there's no doubt that there will be um, a different political makeup. There's no doubt that we would have a written constitution. You know, it's incredibly anachronistic in the United Kingdom that there is no written constitution. And all of those things should be informed by the people of Wales and, uh, and driven by the people of Wales. I don't think we should take the approach of other countries that have uh, um, gone for independence over the years. I mean, I, I know Iceland is a great example because they just adopted the constitution that already existed with a few small changes. All we're saying that they were going to change it, but they're only actually changing it now, 70 years later, um, which is a long time after their independence. Uh, so, so we should be a little bit more organized and structured about it. You know, citizen assemblies, whichever way you find to communicate with the people of Wales, it must be done that way. And so I guess looking at the case for independence, I think the, the counter argument at the moment would be, look, you've got a devolved government in Wales, which has not insubstantial powers, obviously not the powers you would get from full independence, but still uh, more powers than you used to have in the when it was the uh, assembly. Now that you've got the Senate, you have more powers um, and you have a relatively progressive government at the moment uh, with Mark Drakeford as first minister. You've got a relatively high degree of cooperation between progressive political parties, whether it be Plyde and Labour in the Senate, whether it be you know, the Greens and Plyde in other, in other places and so on. And, uh, you know, a lot of people like myself who are sitting in England look at the Welsh government with a great degree of envy, um, especially with the, the state of what we've got in Westminster. Why do you think that the kind of devolved administration, which has repeatedly given you sort of centre left governments uh, throughout the history of the, the Senate and the Welsh Assembly is insufficient that you need to, to, to get independence? Well, you, you've touched on a lot of, re of the good reasons for independence there. I mean, I mean, let's start with the current devolution settlement, for, to, you know, just as a, as, a, as a kickoff point. So the interim report of the Constitutional Commission for Wales may, uh, has made it very clear and has come down categorically that the existing devolution settlement is inadequate in a myriad of ways. It just doesn't work. There are too many places where there are conflicts. There are too many places where not having the levers of power causes all sorts of, of issues. Um, and that, that, that covers energy. It, it covers simple things like elections. Some elections are run from Westminster. Some elections are run from Cardiff in Wales. And that, that's bonkers, sometimes on the same day. I mean, it, this is just an absurdity. Um, the lack of devolution of the, of the criminal justice system in Wales and policing means that you can't create joined up ways of dealing with things. It, 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 it's anachronistic and causes more trouble than it should. Um, and some would say that that's an argument for improving the devolution settlement. But ultimately, any devolution settlement, any devolution settlement will give you a situation where too often Westminster will be pulling in one political direction, as it is today, and the whole of Wales will want to pull in a different political direction. And historically, for Wales, that is over 65% of the time. You know, over 65% of the time in Wales over the last 100 years, Westminster has been governed by a party which has not been elected by Wales. And, you, you know, that apart from the fact that that's just democratically unacceptable, it means that you don't get um, any of the Welsh priorities being put first. And even when in Westminster you get a party or a leadership which is of a similar sort of st political standpoint to, to Wales, you still don't get Welsh priorities being placed first because there's 55 million people in England and there's only 3 million in Wales. And, that, and that's always going to be the case. And, and to go back to my earlier answer um, in one of your early questions, the world has changed. You know, you, you know, there are no good arguments for union on the pattern of the United Kingdom anymore. It, it is a decaying vestige of empire really and it is something that belongs to history it's just that we're taking a little bit of time to become aware of that and register that 
And I genuinely believe that England, Scotland, Wales and, and United Ireland would all be better off as strong, independent nations cooperating well with each other. And that, and that very much includes England. You know, England would definitely also be better off. Um, so so I, I think the argument now has become so strong in favour of independence that if, if we just have people talking about it, eventually a, 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 a vast majority will come across to the side of independence because it, it, it just makes logical sense. I mean, it is a sensible option today. And so before I ask you about how our viewers can get involved in Yes Cymru, I've got a question that's come in from the chat from Philip Davies, uh, one of our regular viewers. Um, and Philip has asked, uh, what will Yes Cymru do to make sure the Welsh independence movement remains progressive? And they've asked specifically about, um, I guess, the the conflict that happened within Yes Cymru a couple of years ago, and specifically some of the allegations of transphobia that were levelled against some Yes Cymru members and members of the uh, committee. Yeah, Diolch Philip. Um, so it, it's a good question and an understandable question. There was quite a lot of turmoil and um, some quite acute growing pains for the organisation at that time. As I say, it wasn't a professional organisation. It didn't have a particularly formalised constitution. Um, which it now does, the, um, the, the National Governing Board, the body um, that set up Yes Cymru 2.0, as it were, worked really hard over the last year and a half to get all of that in place, uh, preparing the way for me, really, uh, to come along and, and giving me some really firm um, foundations upon which to build the organisation as we move forward. In terms of accusation of transphobia or any other kind of prejudice, I want to be absolutely categorically clear that Yes Cymru is an organization for everybody and is completely and totally inclusive. You, you know, we are campaigning for an independent Wales so that in an independent Wales, we can have the inclusive, the kind of inclusive society and political structure that is suitable for the 21st century and a digital and technological age. Um, and I'm absolutely categoric about that. And that is certainly what's going to be happening on my watch. And so finally, before I let you go and enjoy the rest of your sunny Easter Sunday, um, for our viewers who are in Wales, lots of them will be members of the Wales Green Party, which obviously is a pro-independence party in Wales. How can they get involved with Yes Cymru and the wider movement for independence? So, uh, I, mean, I mean, for everybody in Wales and, and beyond Wales, um, for the first thing to do is, is to get online and uh, join Yes Cymru. Um, membership makes a huge difference. Uh, at the moment, um, the largest political organisation in Wales by a, a stretch is the Labour Party. Um, and then in second and third place, I think we're pretty close to each other, almost neck and neck, uh, Applied Cymru and Yes Cymru. Obviously, if Yes Cymru can become a larger political organisation in terms of its membership, its impact becomes far more significant. And if we can imagine, it is certainly my goal, I'm, I, I am incredibly ambitious for the movement and I'm incredibly ambitious for Wales and for the people of Wales. I feel that we should be ambitious, confident and hopeful. Um, and, and often we are not. We, we, we often do ourselves down. But my ambition for the organisation is that we become the largest single political organization by membership in Wales. And, and in doing so, however long it takes, I'm sure that we will get to that milestone. And when that happens, that is a permanent and dramatic shift to the political landscape in Wales. Because you have to remember that for a hundred years, the Labour Party in Wales has held that position. And because we're a pan-political movement, there is nothing stopping people having multiple memberships. So that is what I would encourage people to do. And that includes people in the Labour Party who are pro-independence. I mean, our recent polling would show that 40% of Labour supporters in Wales are already pro-indie. Sometimes that figure hits 50% in some surveys. Um, and yet the Labour Party in Wales remains an unionist party, which must be causing all sorts of internal tension for them. But that's, that, that's a problem for them to deal with themselves. Um, but from our perspective, we're, we are absolutely op open armed and we would welcome members of the Labour Party, members of the Green Party. We would even me welcome members of the Conservative Party if they support independence. 
obviously I don't think there'll be very many of those because unionism is pretty core to their set of beliefs. Um, but everybody else, absolutely, come along and join us. And once you're, once you're joined or even signed up as a supporter to receive emails, you'll start to get information about how to take part at a local level. Um, as we strengthen that group structure, you, you'll find out which, your, which one your local group is, go along to your local group. Uh, I'm currently trying to go across the length and breadth of Wales for face-to-face -face question and answer sessions with as many groups as I can. I, I had great, a great time in Blaenau Festinio a couple of weeks ago, and I think I'm up in Machenchef on the 15th of um, April, and then I'm in Newport on the 18th of April. So by all means, come along to those, ask questions, uh, and just get involved. Brilliant. Thank you so much for your time today. It's been an absolute pleasure, Gwent.